Welcome culinary enthusiasts. My name is Chef John Paul Hutchins and I am thrilled that you're here today. I've got a really, really, it's a classical but such a cool dish and I've got a, a very cool surprise at the end for you, a very contemporary twist on it. We're gonna be making classic salad niçoise. Now, let me give you a little of the backstory on salad niçoise. There was a great chef called Auguste Escoffier, chef of kings, king of chefs, and he would work for the most moneyed individuals and he opened up places like the Ritz, all right? And the moneyed individuals would go down to the south of France where they would, uh, the kings and queens and landlords, and they would have a great time at the seaside. And then in the winter months, they would go back to Germany, England, or other countries. Well, Nice is a part of the French Riviera. And Nice was famous for a few ingredients like tomatoes, niçois olives, tuna, of course, um, uh, green beans, uh, all these wonderful flavors. And what Escoffier decided to do was, well, he was not only a great chef, but he was a great entrepreneur. And he was getting into the canned food business. Now that doesn't seem like much now, but back then it was a big deal if you could have tomatoes out of season. And Escoffier started canning tuna and tomatoes. And the idea was to build a salad around the items that were in Nice so that when these people went back to Central Europe or England or deeper into France, well, they could still have that amazing tuna. They could still have those amazing tomatoes. So we built this salad to market his products. And it's a salad that's been around for over 100 years. It's incredibly famous and it's loaded with techniques. So I wanna show you this salad right now. Now, the first thing I have over here, it might seem a little unusual, but I have some tuna and this is fresh tuna. Now, typically when you see a niçoise salad, you use canned tuna, which would be traditional, right? Escoffier's canned tuna. Um, but what we're doing is we're poaching tuna in olive oil. So I, it's, this is actually called a confit. So I took this beautiful piece of tuna and I took some olive oil and I added some whole garlic to it and I added some thyme and some rosemary and some peppercorns. You could really add any flavor that you want to good olive oil. And then I just slowly cooked it. And I'm talking like 160 degrees. It's not like frying. And the idea is to draw that flavor out. The French might call it a tisson, all right? So it's an extraction of all those flavors into the oil. So as I slowly cook this tuna in here, it takes on the flavor of all those items. So I'm just gonna, put this on a little paper towel just for a bit. So this is gonna be served at room temperature, so I'm just gonna let this hang out. Okay. So to cook my, the rest of my tuna, I'm just gonna throw it in, and at a very low temperature, if I start to see bubbles, that means I'm frying. So at about 160 degrees. Perfect. And I'm gonna move this over here. This will take about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna turn the heat off and just let it sit and relax and soak up all that amazing flavor in olive oil. So, low temperature, and we're gonna check on that in a little bit. Okay. Now, over here I'm gonna boil up some uh, green beans, okay? Specifically, something called haricot vert, all right? Which is a green, it's a thin green bean that uh, came originally from Europe. They're widely available in the United States. I love them. They're super delicate, they're super tender. Now, when you cook green beans, and the style we're gonna cook them is called a l'anglaise, in the English style, which means boiled. It's in salted water. Now, most people, when they salt water, they use a kind of like magic pixie powder, okay? Where they're gonna sprinkle a little bit in there, and it's really not gonna have a whole lot of impact. They just, well, I salted the water. You, I want you to salt water until it tastes good. So, using a spoon, I'm gonna show you the two spoon method. This one goes in the pot, this one goes in my mouth. I taste it, it's okay, but it could use some more salt. Now it should be the flavor of seawater. I should taste the salt, because if the water has no flavor, it'll have no impact on the vegetables. And what will happen is the amazing flavor from the green beans, instead of being enhanced by the cooking process, is actually gonna leach its flavor into the water. So I'm gonna have tasty water and bland green beans. Okay, this is such a simple technique, but it will change everything that you do. Apply this to all your vegetable cooking, all your potato cooking, all your pasta cooking. I'm telling you, this will change you. All right, so I'm using kosher salt also. That is perfect. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. Now, when we say a l'anglaise or boiled vegetables, actually a l'anglaise was kind of a joke because the English had a reputation for boiling everything. So the French just called it, if you were boiling it, a l'anglaise. Um, but 
it's really a, a very practical, very simple way of preserving flavors and vegetables. Now, when we're cooking vegetables, it became popular to cook them al dente. And people got carried away in the 80s and 90s with al dente. Al dente was basically, um, I was getting vegetables that weren't really even cooked. I mean, the color was set on the outside, but they would just go in, basically be passed over a pot of boiling water and then served to me. Al dente means to the tooth. I'm going to call these fully cooked. And a fully cooked vegetable is al dente. It still has a crispness. It still has its flavor intact, but it's not mushy. So I shouldn't be able to take that green bean and slide the two halves apart. It should have great flavor, but it shouldn't be undercooked. Now, undercooked to me, it still tastes like earth or dirt, all right? It has a very deep flavor to it. So I'm going to cook these until they taste good. So for these guys, I'm just going to put about half of these in. I'm going to drop them in, and I'm going to simmer them. I'm not going to boil them, because if I boil them, they're going to beat each other up, okay? So I want these to cook gently. These will take a couple minutes, all right? Now, let's talk about blanching, parboiling, and fully cooking. Well, when I blanch something, I do it for one of two reasons, all right? The, name, the word gets thrown around a lot, but what it really means is either to set the color from something or to remove flavor for some, from something. So something like kidneys, all right, have a strong flavor. I would blanch a kidney to pull that strong flavor out and make them, uh, you know, basically cut the strong flavor and bring out the wonderful flavor of it. With vegetables, if I'm doing broccoli like a crudité, instead of just putting out plain old broccoli, if I drop it in boiling water for just a second and pull it out and then st and arrest the cooking in cold water, I have gorgeous color, but it's still a raw, crunchy vegetable. Par cooking means I'm gonna cook it about half to three quarters of the way because I plan on finishing the cooking process later. Fully cooked, I'm gonna cook the vegetable and serve it immediately. So these are gonna be fully cooked because I'm gonna drop them in ice water to stop the cooking process, and then I'm gonna serve them. Okay, so these are, this is gonna be a salad, so it's meant to be served cold. So these guys are just about there. I'm gonna grab my tongs and pull them out, and they look fantastic. Okay, so simple. Look at the color on these things. Just absolutely gorgeous, look at that. That's the way a green bean should look. Beautiful, delicate, not falling apart, okay? They're holding their shape, all right? They're not limp, gorgeous. Now, how long do I leave them in ice water? Well, I leave them in ice water until they're chilled all the way through. A lot of people will drop them in the ice water and leave them there for an hour. Well, the same thing is gonna happen is if I were to overcook it. It's gonna get waterlogged and a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the flavor is gonna go up into the ice water. So as soon as it's chilled, I'm gonna pull it out. That should take just a second. Now, next technique, very cool technique. I'm gonna blanch some tomatoes. Now remember Escoffier had fresh tomatoes, all right? So what I'm gonna do is cut out the core and I'm gonna make a little X on the bottom. The way I do that, I hold my knife, I choke up to the tip. And the reason I do that is in case somebody hits my thumb, my, hand, my knife won't go through the tomato and into my hand, safety. At an angle, I'm gonna pivot, pull out that core, Cut the end, drop it in boiling water. Again, boom, pivot, cut the end. Pivot, cut the end. Okay, now, I grew up in America, and I lived my whole life without having to peel a tomato. So why do we do this? Well, a couple things happen. I'm gonna make a vinaigrette to go on this. And when I make the vinaigrette, it won't soak into the peel. It'll soak into the flesh, but it won't soak into the peel. So this will allow the vinaigrette to actually affect the flavor of the whole tomato. Also, when you're eating it, you won't have those pieces of skin that you're gonna be spitting out, okay? It's indigestible. Great fiber, um, but not so tasty. Now these are done, I'm gonna show you right now, when they start to split open. So that's perfect. Now I'm not cooking the tomato, I'm just peeling it. See, perfect, perfect. So once again, how long do I leave them in the ice bath? Just until they're chilled, they'll get waterlogged. Think about a tomato, I don't want it to be spongy. So if it turns out that I left these in a little bit too long, maybe my tomatoes are super ripe and they just get really soft on me all of a sudden, it's that time of the year, um, turn them into tomato sauce, turn them into tomato coulis, chop them up, throw them in something else, make salsa, unbelievable, best salsa you've ever had. Don't use the canned stuff, use fresh tomatoes, unbelievable. Now. I'm gonna peel them, and I'll use, uh, let me see, get rid of this guy. Just have a little garbage plate here. 
Couldn't be any simpler. Boom. Peel. 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 Beautiful. If they get stuck, I can use my paring knife. And the way that I do that is just to use my thumb to grab a hold of the peel, pull it back. Pull it back. Boom. One more. Pull it back. Pull it back. Easy. You preserve the flavor of the tomato. It's going to soak up whatever you put it with. And these are also perfect for making tomato sauce. Gorgeous. Look at that. Okay. I want to show you a trick. And I hate to say it, but I've been hiding it from you. It's under the cutting board. You ever seen that nonstick shelf stuff that you put in uh, your house? Well, in the culinary business, we actually use this as a non-skid surface under our cutting boards. And the reason we do that is because we can wash it and sanitize it. So instead of putting like a wet paper towel or something that might get kind of funky, I can, launch, I can wash this, I can put it in my knife kit, I can travel with it, and I've always got a safe non-skid surface. Try it at home. It's simple, and you can buy this stuff at the dollar store. It doesn't cost anything. All right, next thing I want to show you. I don't want to get my cutting board funky, so I'm going to put down a towel, and I'm going to make a vinaigrette. Now, there's a couple elements to my vinaigrette here. It's going to be real simple because I have so many different vegetables, so many different flavors. I'm going to add a little bit of basil at the end, but I'm going to actually fold that in as part of the salad. So I'm going to use the basil almost as a lettuce instead of an herb, all right, because I want a lot of pop. And I'm going to show you how to cut that. It's a chiffonade, very cool cut. But I've got a garlic clove, and I've got my traditional vinaigrette is one part oil, um, vinegar to three parts oil. So I'm using one part white vinegar, all right, actually white wine vinegar, not white vinegar. White vinegar is the stuff you use to clean lime deposits out of an iron, all right? You really, you don't want to use that for anything other than cleaning. Hot and sour soup is white vinegar and white pepper. But other than that, it's one of those, it feels like ice picks in your jaw when you eat that stuff. Nice white vinegar. Spend the money. I've got a beautiful extra virgin olive oil. It's appropriate to this dish. I want the olive flavor. It's niçoise. I've got olives in it. Otherwise, if you're at home, if you don't want the olive flavor, use a neutral oil. But the ratio is the same. One part vinegar, three parts oil. Now check this out. I've got a garlic clove. Now when we clean garlic, I'm going to cut the end off because it's bitter. And I'm going to cut it in half. Now if you've ever seen garlic and they've got those little, um, little cores on the inside that are green, this one doesn't because it's pretty fresh. I'd want to remove that and pull that out because that's bitter. All right? Cool trick. So I'm going to get rid of these guys. Now, have you ever been to a restaurant and ordered a salad? And let's say it's a first date. So everybody's on their best behavior. And the salad comes with the meal. And you bite into that salad. And you get a chunk of garlic. And all of a sudden, your lungs are on fire. Fire. I never want that to happen to my customers. I want the romance to continue through the whole meal. So. That has to do with the way you chop the garlic. Now let me show you what I'm doing. This is minced garlic, and this is great for sautéing. I don't want it big and chunky, all right? Every cut has a different application. So when I mince garlic, this would be great in a sauté, because when I cut it by hand like this, it won't burn up in the pan. When you buy jarred garlic, it's cut in a centrifuge. So it's just vegetable matter. All the protective oils have been whipped out of it. You put it in a pan, it burns instantly. You've seen it, right? You've seen it happen? Chop the garlic by hand, that won't happen. But once again, if I take this chunky garlic, even though it looks pretty fine, I'm going to bite into it. Solution, turn it into a paste. Use some kosher salt and put a good amount of it on top. And it's going to be used as an abrasive. Now check this out. Boom, boom. Using the side of my knife, just smear it. Now, of course, I'm going to have to alter the amount of salt that goes into the recipe now, so I have to be mindful of the fact that I just used a whole lot of salt in this paste. But the beauty is it instantly dissolves now, and there's no chunks of garlic. The other thing is when I add it, I have immediate garlic flavor. If I leave my garlic chunky, it's going to take a while for that garlic to come out. So I'll taste my dressing. And then half an hour later, it's going to taste different because that chunk of garlic is like a tea bag. It's going to exude flavor. Okay. Boom. In. And it takes almost no time. 
Mm. Now, have you ever done this and you're trying to add the oil? You know what I mean? Try this trick. Take a pot, put it down, put your bowl in the pot. It anchors it for you. And then just whisk it in slowly. Now this is a temporary emulsion. So in a temporary emulsion, I have a water phase and an oil phase. So the water phase is vinegar, lemon, wine, anything like that. The oil is being dispersed in the water by being broken up into droplets. So the faster I whisk it, the smaller the droplet is, the more stable the emulsion. But because there's no binder like egg yolk or lecithin or mustard, it's going to separate. So right now what I'm trying to do is just make everybody happy. I'm just introducing the oil, the vinegar, and his pal garlic, all right? Now, you'll also notice that the garlic and the salt went in at the beginning. Any idea why? Well, salt doesn't dissolve in oil, but it dissolves in vinegar. So when I add it to the vinegar, it completely dissolves and then disperses throughout the oil. So I have good flavor. Try it at home. Try dissolving salt in oil. Can't be done. But I'll tell you what it's good for. If you take kosher salt and some cheap oil, it's probably the best way to clean a cast iron pan because it's abrasive, it's oil, keeps it nonstick. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit. I'm gonna let all those flavors kind of meld together a bit. Now let's look at the rest of the items in our salad. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Now, All right, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm done with that. Now I've got a couple of things here. Very excited. I've got my green beans, we've already seen them. And they look okay, they look good. It's a nice green bean. It's not a great green bean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut some on a bias, just to give it a cooler look. Cut it on a bias, just make it look more interesting. And notice I left that really cool tip on it also. Oop, get back here. Bias, bias, nice, okay. I mean, tell me the truth. Look at this. Ready? Boom. Industrial. Ooh, that person must have had some training. That looks pretty good. See the difference? Much nicer looking. All right, these just look like chopped beans. So we have beautiful ingredients. We want to pay them the respect that they deserve by treating them right and making them beautiful. So we'll cut all these guys on a bias. Boom. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna stack up a couple at one time, cut them all on a bias, boom. Stack them up at one time, cut them all on a bias. Oh, that one got away from me, boom. So I'm gonna put these guys back in here. Uh, throw this in anyway. <gasps> Breakfast radishes, I love these things, all right. They are, if you're not a big fan of radishes, I encourage you to try breakfast radishes. They're a lot sweeter, they're a lot milder. They don't have that big horseradishy uh, feeling in your sinuses when you eat them, that bitterness, all right? Now, I've got a couple options on the way to cut this. I wanna remove the stem end, and I can cut them in coins. Or as the French would say, a rondelle, okay? I can cut them on a bias. which is kind of cool, or as the French would say, a sifflet, all right? And a sifflet actually came from cutting um, chives and things like that. It's a cut on a bias and it looks like a little flute. So a sifflet means flute. Or I can cut them lengthwise into quarters or sixth, all right? Jimmy crack corn, you know what I mean? Have fun with it. Experiment it. Different shapes, different textures. Just make it appealing to the eye. Make it a little different. Okay, this cut right now is speaking to me, though. This is the one that says uh, it wants to be in the show. So I'm going to put him there. So, all right. Now, a quick note about the way I'm cutting things. I just want to show you really quickly how to safely cut. You watch chefs on TV, um, and it just seems like they're going rapid fire and they never hurt themselves, or there's a reason. Their hand is curled over like this. Their knife hand, check the grip, is like that. It's very stable. I'm never like that. That's a bad idea. 
all right, and it'll eventually inflame that tendon there, okay, and become very painful. That's a good grip, that's a good grip, that's a good grip, that's a good grip, not a good grip, good grip. This hand, my fingers, if they're straight up and down, I lean forward a bit, so my fingertips are curled under, so when I cut, I'm using a circular motion with my hand, like a choo-choo train, and my left hand is protected, because I can't cut my fingertips because they're not sticking out, okay? That's the technique. Now let's see what else we have. I have <gasps> beautiful celery. Now I love celery, but I want to peel those long strings out of it. Have you ever flossed with celery? I have, okay? Those strings in there, you want to get those out, okay? So if it's young celery, it doesn't have a whole lot of fiber in it, but as it gets older, yeah, it can be pretty bad. So I'm gonna cut these on a bias. I'm gonna take these guys, stick them over here, and let's just go, boom, like this. All right, so pretty groovy, bias cut celery. So I'm going to put this over here. Pretty cool? All right. Pull these guys apart. It's just a fun cut. Great for stir fries. There they go. Right in there. All right. Cucumber. All right. So I'm going to do something with a cucumber. Um, this is a European cucumber. So When I work with a European cucumber, I don't have to worry about peeling it because the, the peel on the outside is very tender. So it's not like an American cucumber where it's really waxy. If I'm using, you can use an American cucumber for this. Just make sure you peel it because it's indigestible. But the one thing that I want to get out of here are the seeds. And I use a spoon to do that and just gently peel out the seeds because they're bitter. Now the interesting thing is I challenge you at home to try this with the seeds and without the seeds. And you'll notice that the whole dynamic, the whole flavor of the cucumber is going to be altered. All right? Because once you remove that bitterness, you bring out this very light sweetness of the cucumber that's inherently in there. The bitterness was always in the way. Give it a shot. All right, so I'm going to do the other one. So once again, just real gently. All right? And believe it or not, I find a plastic spoon works best because the edge is so thin and sharp. Okay, and these I'm going to cut into a demi loon, which means a half moon. All right? Okay, once again, you can do this. It's just technique. Make sure you have those hands curled back. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of those guys. All right, so I'm building the base of my salad. Okay, it's starting to look kind of colorful. I've got some beautiful green over here. I've got some red that's going to be worked in. <gasps> More red. red. Red bell peppers. I'm going to put this guy back over here. So, I want to cut juliennes, all right? So technically a julienne is an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch by about two to two and a half inches. But uh, in, in France, the cut really serves the dish. So, and also they have the metric system, so they don't know from inches, all right? So trust me on this one. So I'm going to cut off the stem and the blossom end or the top and the bottom. I'll put these guys back over here because I can still use those for something else. Then I'm going to cut this, uh, let's go right about there and just open it up. And there's my seed pod. So I'm just going to cut that loose, cut that loose, cut that loose, cut that loose, all right? And just remove that seed pod. Now that's garbage. I don't want that, obviously. Now in here, I've got some beautiful pieces of pepper, but I've got these guys in the way. Well, if the seeds were bitter and the ribs are connected to the seeds, the ribs are bitter. So I want to remove that as well. So I'm going to lay my knife off the side of the table, okay? So my knuckles aren't in the way over here. And I'm just going to saw right across gently. Gently, not a whole lot of pressure, then reach over the top when I get close to my hand. Boom. And then I'm going to go a little bit deeper and peel this off. Okay, now this might seem wasteful, but I can take this, I can puree it and strain it and make a juice out of it. And that can be added to my vinaigrette a little bit later if I wanted to, if I wanted to add some bell pepper flavor to it. Hold it down, cut straight across. Hold it down. Cut straight across. Beautiful. So I end up with these beautiful planks. I'm going to remove my seeds here. It's going to take a second and clean up. So I want to make sure that I'm not working out of my own garbage. I will create garbage because I'm working with food. Put him over 
here. Just take a second to clean up. Tighten up your station. Beautiful. Now, Julianne, same technique I used before. That circular motion, boom. Nice, 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 nice. My fingers are curled back. I have a great grip on the knife, so I'm very secure. Now, I've got a green bell pepper over here, but I'm going to make the chef's choice because I've got a lot of green going on in the salad, so I'm going to omit it, but you can certainly add it, all right? Remember, all of these recipes, once you get the techniques down, they're a starting point for what looks good to you, what tastes good to you, all right? If I go to the supermarket and the red bell peppers just don't look good or they're super expensive, I'm not going to use them, all right? But I can still make the salad. So once again, a couple of techniques, thousands and thousands of variations. It's really up to you and your creativity. Okay, so clean this off, wipe my knife down. Okay, now there has to be potatoes in here because potatoes are a big part of Nice. And I've got a couple here. I've got fingerling potatoes, I've got red bliss. I'm gonna go with the red bliss today just because I, I love fingerlings, um, but I just want that red look. Now, let me show you something about cutting potatoes. I'm gonna dip in ice water. And actually, let me pull these guys out. They are done. Nice and chilled all the way through, beautiful. Not waterlogged, still nice and crunchy. So, I'm gonna dip it. I learned this from a sushi chef. Dip it, tap the end of your knife, and a bead of water goes all the way down the blade. And then I slice, boom. Boom. Now, these are perfectly cooked. If they're overcooked, they're gonna start to fall apart on me. If they're overcooked, Smash them up when they're hot. Hit them with a little bit of pickle juice. Bang them with some mayonnaise. And you've got an unbelievable potato salad. That's another interesting thing about the French is they wouldn't throw away pickle juice. They wouldn't throw away olive juice. They'll actually use that as a liquid. If you think about it, it's a brine. It's salt water. It's flavored salt water. So that flavor can be used in other things. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of put these guys back together the way that I cut them for my presentation. All right, what else do I have? I've got my Niswa olives. We're going to use those. I have my eggs. Ooh. Same thing. Dip. Cut. All right. Perfect hard-boiled egg. No green. Nice and creamy on the inside. The way we cook hard-boiled eggs here... Put an egg in a pot of cold water. Never, never, never boiling water. Start it in cold water, bring it to a boil, cover it, pull it off the fire, and leave it for 20 minutes. It will be the tenderest, tastiest, creamiest egg you've ever had, completely cooked. But you won't have that, that, that off sulfury aroma. All right, beautiful. So we're gonna put those right there. And then I have my beautiful tomatoes. And we are almost ready to assemble our finished dish. I'm getting very excited. And I'm just going to take this guy, I'm going to quarter him, and boom, and boom. And I'm going to go in between here and just open it like a book. Boom. And open it like a book, like that. And I'm going to take a slice of egg and put it in there. I'm going to take a slice of egg, put it in there. Okay, so that'll be one of my garnishes for my plate. Now let's build this plate. Beautiful, clean plate. Now, classically, when you make a salad, there has to be an underliner. And in this case, we're going to use Boston or bib lettuce, which are both gorgeous. And the underliner kind of frames the salad. So I'm going to put a piece here. I'm going to put a piece here. Now, this has all been washed off. And the way I washed it off was in a deep sink full of ice water. And... I allowed the lettuce to kind of plunge and sit in there. So all the dirt went to the bottom. 
What I do not want to do is now empty the sink with the lettuce in it because then the lettuce will go down and sit in the dirt in the bottom, right? Makes sense. So I'm going to gather up all that lettuce and I wrapped it in paper towels and put it in the refrigerator and let it just plump up. Okay. And it looks, doesn't it look good? Really looks good right now. All right. Now making our salad. What do I want to do first? I've got my dressing and what I'm going to do because we want this to look beautiful is um, I'm going to dip things into the dressing. So I'm going to put a little bit of dressing in the bowl and I'm just going to kind of toss stuff in there. All right, this is the difference between four stars and five stars. So I've got my dressing, I'm going to throw just a pinch of white pepper in. And the reason I'm using white pepper is white pepper enhances the flavor of other things. Black pepper really is a flavor. If I want to taste pepper, I use black pepper. If I want to enhance the flavor of something with pepper, I use white pepper. So oftentimes you'll see white and black pepper used in the same dish. So I'm re-emulsifying this, and then I'm just going to put a little drizzle in, just a little bit. And I'm going to start with my beautiful potatoes. And I'm just going to bathe them in here, just ever so gently. Both sides. Oh, look at you. That is a pretty potato. That's a very happy potato. I'm going to put him there. Okay, and I got my other potato. And we'll bathe him. Could be a her, but I think it's... No, this is a him. It's a ham potato. Okay. And that goes there. Just a little bit though. On the edge. I want to make sure the rim of my plate stays clean. Now, I'll put these guys here. And here. And I've got this spoon over here. So I'm just going to drizzle just a little bit of vinaigrette. Remember, we went through all the trouble of peeling those tomatoes so we could get some vinaigrette on them. Pretty. Okay. Now, we're in the crescendo phase. I'm going to go boom. My red bell peppers. I'm going to go boom with my beautiful cucumbers. I'm going to go boom right here and right here. I'm going to throw some of these guys in. This is starting to look very good. Oh, more color. Throw it in. Throw in my celery. Gorgeous. Just pile it all in there. All goes in. All goes in. Mix it around. Okay, I don't want to overdress the salad. I just want to have a nice glaze. Now, at this point, I'm just going to move some of these things off. Clean up my board a little bit. And I'm going to shift and add some basil. Because remember I said before I was going to use the basil as kind of a salad green instead. So here's my basil. I love this. I can't be in a bad mood when I have basil. It's springy. It's light. It's got so much flavor. And the problem is a lot of people will just throw it and hack it up. Whack, whack, whack. I don't want to do that. I want to release all the flavor, but I want to keep the basil looking beautiful. And the technique we use is called chiffonade. So to chiffonade, essentially, I'm going to stack my basil on top of itself. Boom. Boom. Leaves, leaves, leaves. Stack. 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 And then roll it up. Now, this is about as tight as a cigarette. Now, hopefully I haven't smoked, but but it should be that fine. And I'm using no downward pressure whatsoever. So I can cut this pretty fat or I can cut it pretty skinny depending on what I want to do. All right, so niçoise is kind of an elegant salad, but it's also from a rustic setting. So I'm going to go kind of in between. So the reason I'm not using a lot of downward pressure is I don't want to crush the leaf. So I want the leaf to cut. I don't want it to depress, okay? Ideally, when I throw this in with the rest of my beautiful vegetables here, all the flavor goes in the bowl. My cutting board shouldn't reek of basil. If I chop basil and my board's green, my board tastes great because that's where all the basil flavor is. So I'm going to throw this in. And I'm just going to put a pile in the middle of the plate, just like that. Pretty.
pretty. We're almost there. Okay, so I have the last two things. I have olives. And anchovies. Now, my anchovy haters are out there. My anchovy lovers are out there. Okay, it's the gorgonzola of the fish world. People either hate it or they love it. All right, I want you to love anchovies, but what's that? Okay, what we did was the French do something called dégorgé, where they soak the anchovies in milk. And when they do that, it pulls out the strong fishy flavor. You can also rinse them off. And then I'm just going to pat them dry. So just paper towels, clean paper towels. Oh, got some basil there. Boom, pat them dry. And then I'm gonna roll my olive up in the anchovy. Little fella, look at him. Just like that. And roll him up. Put him there, put him there. And the reason I do this is for the people who are not crazy about anchovies, it gives them an option. And then the last thing I do is I place my tuna on top. And I can take the tuna and just squeeze it gently and break it a little bit, tear it apart, just like that. Just break it, just where it naturally wants to break. So I'm not a big fan of cutting it. I like a little more rustic look. How's that for a salad niçoise? Pretty cool? It's nice. It's very classical. It looks good. It's going to be tasty. But you expect more from the Cordon Bleu, don't you? Allow me to show you a contemporary spin on the classic salad niçoise. Carla. So one of our amazing students, Carla, has put together a plate that was designed by one of our chefs. And this is a Le Cordon Bleu contemporary interpretation of a salad niçoise. We have the egg. This tuna has been torched. This one has been cooked confit. Um, this one uh, was poached. And this one over here was frozen and grated, tartare. Okay? We have um, olive dust. We have uh, a parsley sauce. We have all these different components. There's my dried uh, tomato. There's my beautiful little, remember potato has to be in there, so there's a little potato wheel, okay? Classic techniques, contemporary application. This is who we are. Welcome to Le Cordon Bleu. I'll see you on campus.